What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Uber Cold Garage. Uh, it's been a while. Didn't mean for it to uh, have taken this long to put out a video. Uh, after Buggerama, uh, I was sick right before Buggerama while I was doing all the work on the bug. Uh, and kind of planned on only taking a week, maybe two off uh, to kind of catch up on sleep and to start feeling better. And then work got pretty busy. Uh, and then unfortunately one of my coworkers passed away right in front of me. Uh, very crazy situation, very unexpected. Uh, so I was having a really hard time with that and dealing with that. I've never had anything like that happen to me before. Uh, so I kind of, shut down for a little bit. I uh, tried to do some fab projects on the bug to kind of keep my main, my brain and everything functioning, uh, focused on other things. So the whole time I was kind of just tinkering a little bit with Ryan's car, getting little things done here and there. So nothing really too extravagant. Uh, so I do have two video, two full videos of bug stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't film just because I didn't feel up to it, but uh, a lot of good progress on both of the cars. I'm feeling quite a bit better now, uh, trying to work past all of it. So Ryan's car got a lot done, uh, a lot of important stuff done. Uh, we're going to, my work schedule has been absolutely insane, so I haven't had time to go pick up the parts that I need, uh, for the coolant system for his car, uh, the place that I get my piping, my aluminum piping from, they're only open, I believe it's Tuesday through Thursday, and they're only open from, like, 11 until 3.30, which really sucks because that's basically my work schedule. I usually leave my house around 4, and I usually don't get home until 4.30 to 5, somewhere in there. So uh, I'm kind of hoping for a short day at work, one of these days coming up, so then I can go pick that stuff up, and then we can knock out the cooling system in this car. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into this video. Uh, I think the next two videos will probably be bug videos. Uh, getting that stuff situated. Getting it so that it's drivable. But uh, while those two videos come out, I will try and knock out a ton of work on Ryan's car. Get this thing up and running and ready for him. So... Let's go ahead and hop into this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Finally get a chance to get back to work on both the cars. Uh, work schedule has been insane lately. I haven't been getting home until after 7 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock. So it's time to hop back into both of the cars. Uh, need to mount the fuel pump filters, all of that stuff. I need to tighten up suspension stuff. We'll get the new master cylinder in there and then we'll start working on getting the radiator system in there. Uh, I did have a little bit of time the other night. Uh, you can see the computer sitting there and the wiring. So I just went ahead and plugged in all of the sensors and everything. Got all that stuff all plugged in. Uh, it only took 30 seconds to get it all plugged in. Uh, so now I can mount the computer, the relays, and all that stuff, and start running my wires to that stuff, and start running the fuel lines back here to the back. So we'll uh, get all this stuff plugged in and start cleaning it out. Uh, one thing that is pretty bad is the floor. Uh, passenger side floor, it looks like 
probably the window was rolled down and it sat outside for a long time. So there's basically no more floor right here. I'm not 100% sure on what Ryan wants to do with this, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run the fuel line and stuff like that. These seats, uh, I'm not 100% sure on how they're gonna mount, but we will go ahead and look at it. Uh, the shift rod is another thing that I gotta figure out and come up with a solution for. I know that uh, there's one or two companies that sell adapters for it. I think I might just make one. I have a stock shifter bushing, so I might see if I can utilize that and get that to work with the stock Volkswagen shifter. So we'll get into that stuff as as soon as we get into a lot of the rest of the stuff. Uh, I'm going to go through and clean out the entire car here pretty quick. Get it all vacuumed up, uh, clean, ready to go. And then we'll uh, we'll just keep pushing forward on both of these cars. Uh, I really wish I had a little bit more time to put into both of them. But work, I don't schedule my work. So uh, it seems like all of my out outside jobs uh out of town jobs all kind of hit at the same exact time so i have a handful that are out of town at the moment but we'll uh i'm just gonna keep pushing as hard as i can to get this car done uh the bug i need to finish up a couple things and then we'll do the first drive video so let's uh let's get this thing going okay well a little bit of bad news. I uh, went ahead and put the T-fitting on the gas tank, looped it around, put a little bit of gas in it, uh, and you can see there that it is dripping fuel. So the fitting in the bottom of the gas tank uh, is leaking. It is part of the gas tank. So that is definitely the reason why they JB welded it. Uh, I don't know what really to do from here. Uh, I'll probably have to talk to Ryan. It's not leaking super bad, but it is still leaking. You can see I got a puddle here. Uh, it's still, still dripping pretty good. So, not 100% sure on what to do with this. Uh, I'll have to talk to Ryan and see what he wants to do. I know that I have a gas tank, but it's pretty dented up and stuff. So, I'll uh, talk to him and then we'll figure out what to do from here.
got half of the engine bay bed lined. Uh, you can see that the orange is extremely difficult to cover up. Uh, so this is just the first coat. Down there I did a test panel. You know, just painted this one one time just to see how it was going to turn out. It turned out really good. Uh, so this section down here was the second coat. Uh, up here was first coat. So I'll go ahead and coat this again. Uh, I have some bodywork stuff that I'm doing in here just to clean everything up. So I'll sand down the rest of this, get this all cleaned up nice and pretty. And then we'll go ahead and paint all of this section or bedline all of this section here. Uh, and then I also have to bedline the rear apron section and start building mountains to get that bolted back up. So we'll go ahead and coat the wall. I'll probably end up finishing the bodywork in here a little bit, get all of this all sanded out, and then we'll coat all of this stuff with the second coat of this. And I might even do a third coat on this. Uh, I don't see anything that's really standing out. So I'll bring the light in here and check and see, but it turned out really good. It's got, it's got a decent amount of texture in it. I got some soft roller brushes that way it kind of picks up and drops wherever. So it's got a nice texture to it. So I think once all of it's all painted, undercoated, it'll, uh, it'll look really, really good. So just one little part to this big project and we'll start getting into all the other little bits and pieces here pretty quick. As you can see, the bug is out of the garage, so freed up some room, went ahead and cleaned everything up, so the garage is all nice and clean. I went ahead and moved Ryan's car over, and he has sent me a brand new gas tank. Uh, the only casualty is it scuffed a tiny bit of paint right there during shipping, but other than that, this should work out great. Uh, it's all nice and freshly painted so we will go ahead and start on finish off the rest of the suspension uh start looking in how into how to get the clutch master slave cylinder in there uh because the subaru trans has a hydraulic clutch so we'll go ahead and get that in uh, try and figure out all that. I did stop and get new fuel lines and we will be putting in the beam braces. Uh, I'll probably get those all painted up, get those put in the car. I also need to go ahead and do one more coat of black on this side. You can see just a little tiny bit of orange peeking through right there. But we'll go ahead and get that in, uh, go through, I'll clean up and vacuum out the motor again and get the alternator bolted up. The wiring harness is in. So all of this stuff looks good. I also need to mount the ECU, but that's relatively simple. I'm going to run a couple wires up to the front. Uh, I'm going to look and see how they want me to wire it and I'll kind of go from there. But it is time to hop on this car extremely hard. Uh, work has been absolutely insane. So I haven't had any time. Uh, and then you guys kind of heard what happened in the intro to this video. So been uh, it's been pretty difficult. But... Uh, it's time to hop back on everything and uh, be back full time.
Got the inside of the hood uh, painted black with high temp. Uh, the reason being is I had such a hard time with the engine bay covering up the orange paint. I figured a little bit of high temp as kind of a primer would work out pretty good. So this is flat black. I'll go ahead and bedline the rest of this. Another cool thing is this kind of leaves it almost like a textured kind of primer. So it'll give something for the bed liner to kind of grab onto. And this stuff sticks super, super well. Uh, I've basically never had a problem with it chipping off or anything like that. So I got this ready. Uh, I still have the rear apron section to do, so I'll sand that down. I want, I want to do a little bit of body work on that to try and get it to line up again to where it needs to be. And then we'll get that installed. And then I also went ahead and got the hinges in wrinkle black. Uh, same with the front arms here. So I know it's kind of dark, guys, sorry. But got all this stuff in wrinkle black. I figure uh, the hinges and the hood latch will be pretty cool in wrinkle because it'll kind of match everything in the engine bay. Uh, another kind of cool thing that I did, the hinge bolts, I went ahead and painted the same gold as the transmission. Uh, that way, the hinges, when they go back on, they'll have gold hardware on them. It'll look pretty cool. It'll kind of tie the whole car together. Uh, really little subtle things like that make a big difference. Uh, just kind of adds to the whole entire thing. So I also went ahead and got another coat of black on this of the bed line. So that looks really, really good. Now uh, we can go ahead and get the alternator plugged in, get the fuel lines bent up where they need to, tag in the fuel lines, uh, and finish off front suspension. So let's keep rolling on all of that stuff. Well, you saw me attempt to put in the beam stiffener. So these uh, go on each side of the front beam. They go towards the outside uh, to kind of strengthen all of this up and uh, make it so then the beam doesn't flex at all. So originally I had it under like this Apparently that's not how you do it. There is no pictures or anything on the internet that I can find. So what I have actually finally came up with is 
this section of the frame horns actually needs to get cut out. And then this little tiny section of the body needs to come out. And that actually slides up into it. And this piece here sets up onto the bottom of the chassis with the bolts that run through. So I got to pull the fuel line back out and I'll jack the car way up and cut this section out. Get both of these installed, I think on the other side, or on the front side, I have to uh, create a little tiny C-notch in here for the, uh, the bleeder there, or not the bleeder, the, uh, the grease dessert fitting. So I'll go ahead and get that notched out. Uh, this car is very, very dirty. Anytime that I touch it, it seems like there's a pile of dirt under the floor. But I guess the more that I do that, the uh, cleaner the car gets. So I'm not too worried about it. It is, uh, it's getting better and better every time that I work on it. Uh, I did go ahead and get suspension all tied in, everything's still kind of loose. I don't have my, my jam nuts in here. Uh, I'll throw uh, an alignment kind of on the front. I'll continue scraping some of the mud and grease and dirt off of the front of this. And then we'll uh, continue getting this front suspension dialed in. Uh, gas tank is ready to go in. You can see I have my rubber fuel lines all the way ran in here. Everything's all clamped down. The uh, fuel filters, I end up riveting uh, hose clamps into the chassis, and then those hold the fuel filters, which is pretty cool. Uh, I do have a couple spots of touch-up paint that I have to do, and then I think what I'm going to end up doing is uh, doing some bed liner around in this area here. Uh, I'm going to brush off and uh, probably clean off a lot of the actual dust because the beam is black underneath all of this. So we'll get it all nice and clean and uh, continue getting this car further and further along. Got both of the beam stiffeners in. Those were really not easy to get in. Uh, so you can kind of see what I had to cut out. I had to cut the corners. Uh, the uh, brake brake line lever is, uh, or the brake line holder had to get cut out. So I will go ahead and shift these back just a tiny bit and re-weld those back in on both sides. That way they are where they need to be. Uh, all the rest of everything down here is basically done. All of the suspension and all that. So next thing I got to tackle is the master cylinder. So just got to pull that brake line, pull the two bolts and the lever that goes to the pedals 
and I'll go ahead and get the new master cylinder in there. So got the new master cylinder. I'll get that all bolted up, get the brake light switches on to this master cylinder. And then I'm also going to start looking at what I'm going to do for the hydraulic clutch. And then after those couple little bits, the gas tank can go in and this whole front section of the car is done. Uh, and then I got to move further forward, cut out a section here for the radiator, get that cut out. And I think when I talked to him last time, uh, we were talking about cutting out the vents like I did on my car and on Zach's car. So we'll cut those out. We'll probably leave uh, these three holes down here open. Uh, and kind of like I told Zach, I'll probably tell Ryan the same thing. Uh, if he's not getting enough flow, we could probably open this hole up a little bit bigger and put a grill in there. So and then we, when he goes to paint the car, he can paint match the grill get that all situated uh it'll end up looking pretty darn good so yeah it's uh getting down the last couple little things up front here and then uh plug in some wiring and some radiator lines and we should be ready to fire this thing up all right guys so that's all i have you for you on this one uh like I said, the next two videos will be probably bug videos. There, it's kind of, there's kind of a chop in, in the center of it. Uh, but with the situation that I had, uh, there was a couple times where I was like, ah, I don't even feel like filming, just feel like working and keeping my mind busy. So I'm sorry if you guys missed stuff, during this couple things on the bug but uh some of the stuff that's coming up is going to be absolutely amazing so there's a lot going on with the car i got parts on order uh so some good stuff ryan's car uh we're gonna try and knock out the majority of it within these next week maybe two uh, try and get this thing fired up and then I will talk to him and see what else uh, we need to do. I know we need to situate the rest of the brake system, uh, figure out hydraulic clutch, uh, figure out the rest of the cooling system and stuff like that. But uh, there's we're getting down to the wire. There's not really too much left to do uh, everything is turning out really nice and is going to function very very well so will be a really really cool car when it's done but until the next one peace out guys